This is problem 4103, review problem 4.103. Uh, we're supposed to balance the following equations. First one is calcium hydroxide plus hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride to form calcium chloride in water. And you see that we have that one balanced. The next one is silver nitrate and calcium chloride react to form calcium nitrate and silver chloride. Calcium nitrate, calcium has a plus two charge, so that has to be two nitrate ions because nitrate has a one, one charge. Calcium nitrate and <coughs> silver chloride, AgCl. Okay, so uh, we have to balance this equation here. There's one calcium on the left, one calcium on the left, one silver on the left, two nitrates. So when you're going to have to be two there, and so we're going to get two chlorides. There we go. So that one's balanced there. All right, lead nitrate, PBNO3, reacts with sodium sulfate to form lead sulfate. Sodium sulfate, SO4, to form. Um, lead sulfate and sodium nitrate, PbSO4 and NaNO3, okay? So lead nitrate, they should tell us, identify what kind of lead, lead 2 or lead 4. We'll assume lead 2, therefore this is, actually let's look at the back really quick just to see what they use because that should be, uh, <coughs> there's a problem there, 103C, yeah they use lead 2 nitrate. So lead true sodium sulfate, that means there's two sodiums for every sulfate because sulfate has a minus two charge. Therefore, we're going to need two sodium nitrates. And I think that's how the equation will be balanced, right? One lead, one lead, two nitrates, two nitrates, two sodiums, two sodium, one sulfate, one sulfate. All right, 4103D, iron three oxide and carbon, Fe2O3 plus carbon react to form iron and carbon dioxide, FeCO2, iron and carbon dioxide. So we have two irons, two irons, let's start by doing that. Uh, three oxygens here and two oxygens here. It looks like we're going to have to put a three there and a two here, okay? So that gives us six oxygens here, six oxygens here, three carbons, three carbons, but we need four irons here now. So. I think that'll do it. Four irons, four irons, six oxygens, six oxygens, three carbons, three carbons. All right, the last one, butane reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide in water. Butane reacts with oxygen. I'm looking for my eraser. C4H10 reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so um, butane, four carbons. Oops, this has to be a four there to start off with. Uh, we have eight, nine oxygens, or so hydrogen, let's see. We have ten hydrogens, so that's five waters there. We have eight plus five. Um, 13 oxygens here, so if we have 6.5 oxygens here, or O2 molecules, that'll give us 13 oxygens. Double check that. 8, so we have 5, yeah, 10, 13, uh, 6.5, 13 there. So you can't have a fraction here though, so we'll double everything. 2, that was 6.5, so 13, 8, 10, let's see if that works. Eight carbons here, eight carbons here, 20 hydrogens here, 20 hydrogens here, 26 oxygen here. Um, eight times two is 16 plus 10, that's 26. So that's butane reacting with oxygen. So that's, one, that's 4103. All right, 4105. Balance the following equations, magnesium hydroxide, HBr, magnesium bromide, water. OK, 
Okay, magnesium hydroxide, hydrogen bromide, magnesium bromide, and water. Is that right? Okay, so it looks like we're going to need, um, let's see, we have three hydrogens here. So if we put, we have two bromines here, so we can put this two here for sure to start off with. Now that gives us one, two, three, four hydrogens. One, two, three, four hydrogens, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four oxygens. One, two here, and then two oxygens there. So I think that does it for us. Second one, HCl and calcium hydroxide. Hydrogen chloride and calcium hydroxide. Products are going to be H2O and calcium chloride. Correct? Okay, so we have this hydrogen here. All right. There. So we're going to need one calcium, one calcium, two chlorides. So we need two here to get two chlorides. Um, that ends up giving us one, two, three, four. So we're going to put the two there to get four hydrogens. There's two hydrogens here, two hydrogens here. That's four altogether. So that's going to be four hydrogens there. Oxygens now. We have two oxygens and two oxygens. So I think that that's balanced. Aluminum oxide. Uh, Sulfuric acid, H2SO4, aluminum, uh, 2O3 plus H2SO4. And the products are aluminum sulfate and water. Aluminum SO4, uh, 3, 2H2O. Yeah, okay. So, two aluminums, two aluminums. The sulfate here, we end up having three sulfates, so we're going to need three of these, right? To get three sulfates, SO4. We can treat that as a group, stay together as a group. Hydrogens, we have six hydrogens here, two here, so we're going to need uh, to multiply that by three to get six. So now we have two aluminums, um, four, five, six, seven oxygens. Oh, no, no, sorry, this is 4 times 3 is 12, 13, 40, 15 oxygens, 12, 13, 40, 15 oxygens, 6 hydrogens, 6 hydrogens, okay. That's that one, uh, potassium bicarbonate and phosphoric acid, potassium bicarbonate and phosphoric acid, H3PO4, this is the phosphate with its acid in the acid form, it's phosphoric acid. Potassium hydrogen phosphate, no, yeah, PO4, and water and carbon dioxide. Plus sign over. All right, so here we go. We have this chemical equation down here, the bottom one we're balancing. Um, looks like we have one potassium on both sides. Let's see, this phosphate, we have a phosphate on that side. Water, carbon. Okay, one potassium, one potassium. Hydrogen, one plus three is four. One plus two, so we're going to have to have, um, if we put a two here, so we have four hydrogens on the left, we have one. So we're going to need to put a, probably a three there and a two here, right? Let's see if that does it. Three, no, no three times two is six, seven, six, seven. Yeah, that works. Okay, so we have potassiums are balanced, hydrogens are balanced, uh, carbon, we have one carbon on the left, one carbon on the right. Oxygens, we have three oxygens on the left, plus these four oxygens on the left, so that there are actually eight here, two, because we have two of these O4s. So eight, nine, ten, eleven, um, we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mm. Nine. So, let's see, make sure I wrote this right. 8KHCO3, H3PO4. K, oh, here's the problem. K2, HPO4, H2O, and CO2. Okay. So, that means we're going to have to have two of this here. And after we do that, let's go back to the beginning. 
All right, let's go back to the beginning. We see that we have one, we need two of this here, and that's going to give us the need for two carbons over here. Now let's look at the hydrogens. All right, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So that, we put that there, and then we have one, two, three, four, five hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five hydrogens. Oxygens, six plus four is 10. Four plus four is eight plus two is 10. That's kind of a complex one. Let's double check that one. <coughs> 105D, 105D, we're looking at two of those and two waters and two carbon dioxides. Great. Okay, 105E, C9H20, nine times two is non-A, right? Was it the combustion? All right, so we have, start off with nine there. Eight, uh, 10 here, 10 hydrogens. All right, we have 10 oxygens plus nine times two is 18, 28, so that's 14. I think that's it. Nine, nine, 20, 20. 14 times two is 28. Nine times two is 18 plus 10, that's 28. All right, finish that one. That was 105. 107. Using the diagram below, write the balance of the chemical equation. So it looks like we have nitrogen, NO, NH3O, is that what we're looking at there? N, what in the world? That's a N, C, So it looks like this, nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen, 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 oxygen. So it must be this chemical here, plus O2, yield, carbon dioxide, CO2 I'm seeing, Water and N, whoops, N2. Okay, I think this is the right thing that we have drawn there. All right, so let's simplify this. The equation here is N uh, H2CHO. And it looks like one, two, three, four. Four of these plus O2. One, two, three, four, five. And we have one, two, three, four carbon dioxide. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six waters. And two. Using the diagram below, write the balance of the equation. That's kind of an interesting problem. Let's verify that we're doing that right. Four, five, four, six, two. Okay. Okay, so that's four, one, oh, seven. Four, one, oh, nine. Chlorine is used in the textile industry, manufacturers to bleach cloth. Excess chlorine is destroyed by its reaction with sodium thiosulfate. So the reaction is sodium thiosulfate, Na, Na2S2O3, chlorine gas, plus water to yield sodium bisulfate. Five of these. Five of these, four of these, 
Um, and it yields Na2SO, uh, what is it? HSO4, bisulfate, bisulfate. All right, plus eight feet HCl. Two sodium bisulfate ions. How many moles of so uh, sodium thiosulfate are needed to react with 0.12 moles of chlorine? So we have 0.12 moles of chlorine gas. Is there in the stuff do you know how to find stuff like that? I, it's on the computer though, yeah? Yeah, do you know how to do that? Or? Okay, I should go to the Okay, if you can try it. Yeah. All right, so. One, two moles of chlorine gas, and we want to identify what? How many moles of sodium thiosulfate? Na, S2, Na, 2S2, O2, 3. Okay? So, if we have 0.12 moles of that, well, the stoichiometry says that for every four moles of Cl2, we consume one Na2S2O3. So, therefore, 0.12 divided by four, right? How many moles of that are needed to react with 0.12 moles of four? Yeah, so 0.12 divided by four. <coughs> Three moles of that stuff. How many moles of HCl can form from 0.12 moles of that? How many moles of HCl? Well, if we have 0.12 moles of chlorine, how many moles of HCl? Well, for every four chlorine gases, eight HCls are produced. So 0.12 times 8 divided by 4, which is going to be 0.24, right? All right, how many moles of water are required for the reaction? How many moles of water? Well, for every 4 chlorines, there's 5 H2Os required. So 0.12 times 5 divided by 4. And that's 0.15 moles of water. Okay? How many moles of water react if 0.24 moles of HCl is formed? So, <clears throat> how many moles of water, moles of water, if 0.24 moles of HCl, right? Well, what's the ratio again? 8 HCls for every five waters. So the question is, <clears throat> how many moles of water react if 0.24 moles of HCl is formed? So we got 0.24 times five divided by eight, 0 0.15. 0 0.24 times five divided by eight, 0.15 moles of water. Okay, four, one, 11. Okay, we're on 4111 now. Problem 4111. Uh, gold cyanide plus zinc giving us gold and zinc cyanide. So gold cyanide. Let's see, is this the gold cyanide tie-in? Yeah, okay. So and zinc metal yielding zinc cyanide ion, CN4. 2 minus plus gold, and we have two of the golds produced. Let's see, two of these to start with. So we got everything there? All right, so we got everything. I've left out the states because they're not going to be necessary to answer these uh, stoichiometric questions. How many grams of zinc are needed to react with 0.11 moles of AUCN2? So 0 0.11 moles of AUCN2, gold cyanate ion, 
how many grams of zinc? Well, there's two moles of AuCN2 for every one mole of zinc required, right? And that's the question. How many moles of, how many grams of zinc are needed to react with that? So now we have to convert for every one mole of zinc. We go to our periodic table and we figure out how many grams of zinc. All right, and that'll be our grams of zinc. Our periodic table here tells us that zinc has a mass of 65.39. 65.39. So if we just take our 0.11 divided by 2 times 65.39, that should give us 5 or 3.5. Uh, nine six grams of zinc. All right. Double check that one. Make sure we're on the right track. Three point six grams of zinc. Great. All right. How many grams of gold can form from 0.11 moles? So from 0.11 moles, um, we want to know how many grams of gold can perform. Can form, right? Well, we know that for every two moles of this stuff, we produce two moles of gold, right? And for every one mole of gold, that's going to be 169, 196, 196 grams of gold. So if we solve this, it'll tell us how many grams of gold. Again, that many moles of gold cyanide, uh, for every two moles of gold cyanate, two moles of gold are produced in the end, or a one-to-one -one ratio there, right? And for every mole of gold, that's 196 grams of gold being produced, okay? So we got 0.11 uh, times 2 divided by 2 times 196, right? Okay, so it's about 21.5 or 21.6 grams of gold. All right, uh, which one are we on? Let's see, how many grams of AUCN2 are required for the reaction of 0.11 moles of zinc. All right, so if we are given 0.11 moles of zinc, how many grams of AUCN2 are going to be required, right? Well, for every one mole of zinc, we need two moles of, that's what this stoichiometry says here, right? Gold cyanide, all right, gold cyanide ion. And for every mole of that gold cyanate ion, how many grams of that gold cyanate ion are we going Well, then we have to identify the mass, the molar mass of the gold cyanate. So that's 197 for the gold, uh, two carbons, that's 24 for the carbons, and uh, 1414 is 28 for the two nitrogens, right? So, we have 197 plus 24 plus 28. That's 249. So, again, we can solve this by looking at how many moles of zinc they gave us. For every mole of zinc, we need two moles of this stuff. And for every mole of that stuff, that means we need 249. So, 0.11 times 2 times 249. And that should be how many grams of this stuff we write. It's 54.78 grams. That was 411C. Double check that one. 4111. No, 41. 411. 411C. 55 grams. So problem 113. The incandescent white of a fireworks display is caused by the combination of oxygen and uh, with phosphorus to form P4O10. Write the balance equation for this one. So we have phosphorus combined with O10 to form P4O10. All right, so I don't know the elemental phosphorus, I guess. So yeah, this must be what it is. Um, so we're going to need four elements of phosphorus and five molecules of oxygen gas. Is that right? Okay, um, I'm going to check on that to make sure that we did that right because if there's something that we messed up at the beginning, we'll be, uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, good. All right, so now the question is, write the balance equation. B, how many grams of oxygen are needed to combine with 6.85 grams of phosphorus? 6.85 grams of phosphorus. How many grams of oxygen? Grams of oxygen. Well, for every 
uh, how many grams of phosphorus, how much does phosphorus weigh? 31. For every 31 grams of phosphorus, that's one mole of phosphorus. And for every four moles of phosphorus here, we have five moles of oxygen gas. They're asking about how much oxygen gas we have, right? And for every one mole of oxygen gas, that's 32 grams of oxygen gas, okay? So 6.85 divided by 3 times 4 divided by 4 times 5 divided by 6 by, no, not by 3, that's by 31. 31 times 5 divided by 4 times 32. So that's 8.84 grams of oxygen. All right, 4, 113, uh, 8.84 grams of oxygen, yeah. So the phosphorus, we only use 31 probably should use 31 or 30.974. Either way, it's okay. All right. Uh, how many grams of P4O10 can be made from 8 grams of oxygen? How many grams of P4O10? Eight grams of oxygen. Eight grams of oxygen gas, right? 32 grams of oxygen is one mole of oxygen gas, and for every one mole of oxygen gas, actually every five moles of oxygen gas, we make one P4O10, right? All right, so every mole of oxygen gas, we have one P4O10, and the question is one mole of P4O10, and for every one mole of P4O10, how many grams of P4O10 is that? Well, phosphorus again, 30.9, we'll multiply that by 4, plus 10 uh, times, so 16 times 10. So we add those two together. So we got 30.9 times 4, plus 160, plus 283.6. Multiply that by 8. Divided by 32, divided by 5, and that should be how many grams of P4, oh, 10 we should expect. I'm getting 14.18, 14 14.2. 14 Good. D, how many grams of phosphorus are needed to make 7.46 grams of P4, oh, 10? How many grams of phosphorus are needed to make 17.0, what is it, 17, or 7.46 grams of P4010? Okay, so again, we had 283 grams of P4010 is one mole of P4010. And for every one mole of P4O10, we have four moles of phosphorus, right? And for every one mole of phosphorus, that is 130.9 grams of phosphorus, okay? So we have 7.46. Divided by 283 times 4 times 30.97, 3.27 grams of phosphorus. 3.27, 3.26. So we round it up a little bit, maybe. 3.26 grams of phosphorus. Okay. 4,115. All right. In a dilute nitric acid, copper metal dissolved. In dilute nitric acid, copper metal dissolves according to that reaction. How many grams of HNO3 are needed to dissolve? 11.45 grams of copper. 11.45 grams of copper. 
And the question is, how many grams of HNO3? Is that right? How many grams of HNO3 are needed to dissolve that much? Well, okay. So if we want to dissolve 11.45 grams of copper, there are, for every one mole of copper, how many grams of copper? 63.5 grams of copper for every mole of copper. And the stoichiometric ratio, there's three grams of copper for every eight mole. There's three moles of copper are consumed by eight moles of HNO3. And every one mole of HNO3 has a mass of 14, 16, 16, uh, 32, 46, 48. 48 plus 14. 48 for the three oxygens, 14 for the nitrogen, and one for the hydrogen. 48, 49, 53, 63, 63. All right. Double check that. 48 plus 15, 63. 63 grams of HNO3 for every one mole of HNO3. All right. So we got 11.45 divided by 63.5 times 8 divided by 3, and again, these 8 and 3 come from the problem here. So you see that there's 8 HNO3s required for every 3 coppers, right? And that's the question, right? How many grams of this stuff HNO3 are required to dissolve how many grams of copper? All right, divided by 8 times 8 divided by 3 times 63, all right? So I'm looking at 30.29 grams of HNO3. 30.29 grams of HNO3, that's 115A, good, got it, all right, uh, 115B, oh, that's it, nice, okay, 117, Oxygen gas can be produced in the laboratory by decomposing hydrogen peroxide. How many kilograms of oxygen can be produced from one kilogram of hydrogen peroxide? One kilogram of H2O2. And we want to know how many kilograms of O2 will get. Okay? Well, one gram of H2O2. So, so we don't have to go to kilograms to grams. We can, we can adjust that just by saying this is a thousand grams. So that one gram of H2O2, not one gram, how many grams of H2O2 for every mole of H2O2? We go to moles again because we need to take advantage of the power of the equation, the stoichiometry there that indicates to us the molar ratio. All right, so we have two, or how many grams of H2O2? Well, that's 16, 16, 32, 33, 34. So there's 34 grams of hydrogen peroxide for every one mole. And the ratio is for every two moles of hydrogen peroxide, one mole of oxygen. 102 for every two moles of H2O2, right? One mole of O2 for every two moles of H2O2. And for every one mole of O2, that's 32 grams of O2, right? Okay, so, and then um, we can, for every one thousand grams of one, Okay, so we have 1,000 divided by 34 divided by 2 times 32 divided by 1,000. So 0.47 or 117, 0.47 kilograms of oxygen. Good, got it. 0.47 kilograms of oxygen. For 119, using the balanced equation, determine the number of SO2 units formed in the following molecular representation. All right, so C2H6, that is C2H6S, all right? Um, nine oxygen molecules. So we have two there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oxygen molecules in the box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
two of those, which are the number of SO2s. So it looks like we're going to be able to form two. We actually have three of the C2H6Ss, but we don't have enough oxygen to consume all three. We only have nine oxygens, so we know we're, real, we're going to be able to consume, consume two of the C2H6Ss, which is called C2, is that C2? It looks like C3. C2H6S. C, C, H, 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 S, H, C2, H, 6S, is that all right? So that thing looks like C2, H6, S. So this is called ethane thiol, ethane thiol. There's, for every two ethane thiols, we need nine oxygen molecules. We have nine oxygen molecules, but we have three ethane thiols. So only two ethane thiols are going to be able to consume. And it says for every two ethane thiols in the equation there, that we get two SO2s. So the number of SO2 units formed in the following molecular representation is two SO2 units, right? We're only going to get two SO2 units. Two SO2 units. Okay, 421. The reaction of powdered aluminum and iron oxide produces so much heat that it goes crazy. Suppose that one in one batch of reaction, 4.2 moles of aluminum was mixed with 1.75 moles. So 4.2 moles of aluminum mixed with 1.75 moles of iron oxide, 1.75 moles of Fe2O3, okay? Iron 3 oxide. Which reactant, if either, is the limiting reactant, okay? well. Uh, aluminum, the reaction is two aluminums and one iron oxide. The product is aluminum oxide and not iron. Alright, so this is the reaction that they use to weld um, steel rails together, like it says, right? So, if you had this ratio here, 4.2 and 1.75 moles of alumina, uh, which one would be, which a reactant if either would be running out first, right? Well, for every two aluminums, you need one of these. So 1.75 of these will need twice as many aluminums. So 1.75 times two, we need 3.5 aluminums. So we have excess aluminum, so we're gonna run out of iron oxide first. Calculate the number of grams of iron that can be formed from this reaction mixture. Well, all of this is going to be used, and for every one mole of Fe2O3, we see that one mole of iron is produced. And for every one mole of iron that's produced, that's how many grams of iron? It's the mass of iron again, 55.8. So this will tell us how many grams of iron will be produced, right? 1.75 times 55.8. Okay, 97.65 grams of iron. That's 421B. Wait a second, got the wrong answer. What's going on? 421B. Calculate the number of grams of iron that can be formed from the, this mixture of reactants. So we had 1.75 moles of this, 1.75 moles, and for every mole of this, oh, sorry, there's a 2 here. 2 there. So there's 2 moles of iron for every 1 mole of this stuff. And that makes sense, that'd be two. So, okay. So it's whatever our number is times two. 195. Okay, 195, great. Got it. Four, 23. Silver nitrate reacts with iron chloride to give silver chloride and iron 3 nitrate. A solution containing 18 grams of silver nitrate was mixed with a solution containing 32.4 grams of silver or iron chloride. How many grams of which reactant remain after the reaction? Okay, silver nitrate, AgNO3, reacting with iron 3 chloride. 
products are going to be A, G, C, L plus F, B, N, O, 3. And there's going to be three of these. All right. So we need to balance this equation first because we need the power of the stoichiometry to answer this question. We're going to answer it all, right? Okay, so we have three of these because we need three chlorines. That means we need three of these, three nitrates. Okay, so we balanced it there. Now we need to 18 grams of AgNO3 and 32.4 grams of FeCO3. 18 grams of silver nitrate, 32.4 grams of iron chloride. Of iron 3 chloride. Okay, so um, how many grams of which reactant remain after the reaction is over? Well, if we had 18 grams of silver nitrate, um, we could convert that to moles of silver nitrate. Um, AG silver 106. 107.8, 107.9. So, uh, silver nitrate. What's the molar mass for silver nitrate? Uh, 107.9 plus 14 plus 40, 32.6, right? 48, 48. So we have 107.9 plus 14 plus 48, 169.9. So that's. 169.9 grams for every mole of, oh, sorry, grams of AgNO3 for every mole of AgNO3. So this will tell us how many moles of AgNO3 we have. So 18 divided by 169.9, right? So that's 0 0.1059 moles of AgNO3, okay? Iron chloride. Iron 55.8, Cl 35, or three of them though. So I'm going Hundred sixty-two point hundred sixty-two point one five. Hundred sixty-two point one five, because chlorine is not thirty-five, but thirty-five point four five. All right. All right. One sixty-two point one five. So there's one sixty-two point one five grams of FeCl three for every one mole of FeCl three. So thirty-two point four times or divided by one sixty-two point one five. So that's 0 0.1998 moles of FeCl3. This is moles of AgNO3, right? All right, so this is how many moles of silver nitrate, that's how many moles of iron chloride. And the question is, how many grams of which reactant will remain after the reaction is over? We need, for every one mole of this stuff, we need three moles of this stuff, right? For every one mole of iron chloride, we need three moles of silver nitrate, right? Okay. So, um, we're not going to have enough silver nitrate because we need three times more silver nitrate. So, how much iron chloride are we actually going to be able to consume? We can take this number, 0 0.1059, divide it by three, and that's how many moles. 0.1059 divided by 3, and the answer is 0 0.0353. 0 0.0353 moles of FeCl3. That's how many moles of FeCl3 we're going to be able to consume. So if we take how many moles of FeCl3 we start with, 0.1998, minus how many we're going to be able to consume, which is 0 0.0353, that gives us 0.1645 moles of iron chloride left over multiply that by the mass of iron chloride, which is 162.15, and 
and that tells us we're going to have 26.67 grams of iron chloride left over. Let's double check that now. 26.7 grams of iron chloride left over. Yeah. So we identified how many moles of silver nitrate we had, identified how many moles of iron chloride we had. We looked at our stoichiometry and saw that we're going to need three times as much silver nitrate as iron chloride. So we could see that we're going to run out of silver nitrate because we have a lot more of iron chloride and we need three times more of this than we have of that. So once we saw that we were running out of iron chloride, we could take this, divide it by three, and that's how much iron chloride we would actually, sorry, once we saw we were running out of silver nitrate, we could take this, divide it by three, and find out how much iron chloride we could actually consume. That's how much we could actually consume. We took this minus the amount we could actually consume, and that amount ended up being 0.1645, so 0.1645 moles of FeCl3, that's how much we can actually consume. And then we multiply that by 162.15 grams per mole, because that's how many grams there are, and that told us that we're going to have um, 100 and, no, 26.7 grams of iron chloride left over. Okay, 125. Some of the acid in acid rain is produced by the following reaction. If a falling drop weighs 0 0.05 grams, well that's water, and it comes in contact with one milligram of NO2, how many milligrams of HNO3 can be produced? Okay, and that's uh, one milligram NO2 or 0 0.001 grams NO2, all right? Um, how many milligrams of HNO3? So we're trying to find out how much HNO3 will be produced. Oops. All right, well, if we have that many grams of water, right? 0 0.05 grams, is that what they said? Zero 0.05 grams of water. Well, how many moles of water is that? There's 18 grams of water for every one mole of water, right? So if we take 0.05 divided by 18, that's 0 0.002772828 uh, moles of water. And if it comes in contact with that much NO2 for every mole of NO2, there should be 16, 16, 32, 32 plus 14, 46 grams of NO2. So 0 0.001 divided by 46. And that number is uh, 2.17 times 10 to the minus 5. And that's moles of NO2, right? So this is how many moles of water we have. This is how many moles of NO2 we have. How many moles of how many milligrams of HNO3? We can first identify the moles of HNO3. Can we produce? Well, um, for every one mole of water, we're supposed to get two HNO3. So we would get twice as many HNO3 as this, but we can see that this is really limiting, right? Because for every three of these, we only get two HNO3s. So this is how many moles of NO2 we got, and for every three NO2s, we get two HNO3s, right? All right, we see that. So we take this value here that we just got, times two divided by three. And that's saying that we're only going to get 1.44 times 10 to the minus 5 moles of HNO3. For every one mole of HNO3, how many grams of HNO3 is that going to be? Well, HNO3 is N, it's 14, 3 oxygens, 48, um, 1 hydrogen, that's 1. So, 48 plus 14 plus 1, all right, 63. So we have 
are moles of hydrogen. We are moles of HNO3 that we decided we'll be able to make. We multiply that by our 63, you know, our, uh, what's this number? Yeah, 63, 63 grams for every mole of HNO3. Multiply it by 63. HNO3. All right, and this is going to be how many moles. Let's rewrite this up here. Okay, so we determined that we were going to have 0.44 times 10 to the minus 5 moles of HNO3, right? And if we have one mole of HNO3, that's 63 grams of HNO3, right? So here we can determine, so we take, we've taken this value, multiplied it by 63, and we got 9.1 times 10 to the minus 4 grams of HNO3. And the question was how many milligrams? Well, 125, is that right? How many milligrams? So that's grams there. We'll multiply that by 1,000. And that gives us point zero point nine one three milligrams. All right, so that's 4, 125. Oh, good. What do you say? Yeah, All right, four one twenty seven. Barium sulfate is made according to the following reaction. Uh, the experiment was begun with 75 grams of barium nitrate and an excess of sodium sulfate. After collecting and drying the product, 64.45 grams of barium sulfate was obtained. Um, calculate the theoretical yield and percent yield of barium sulfate. So if we had 75 grams of barium nitrate, 75 grams of barium nitrate, then we should have been able to get how much barium sulfate. All right? So we want grams of barium sulfate. Well, um, we want to know how many moles of barium nitrate are in one gram of barium nitrate. That'll convert it to moles. And then we see that for every one mole of barium nitrate, we should get one mole of barium sulfate. So this should be a one-to-one -one ratio, one mole of uh, barium sulfate, one mole of barium nitrate, right? And after we're in moles of barium sulfate, for every one mole of barium sulfate, how many grams of barium sulfate are there? All right, so we need to know the molar mass of barium nitrate <coughs> and the molar mass of <coughs> barium uh, sulfate. So, what's the molar mass of barium nitrate? Uh, it says here... Let's try that again. What's the molecular weight of barium nitrate? So barium nitrate looks like it's 261.337, 261.337 grams per mole. Molecular weight of barium sulfate um, 233.43 grams per mole, 233.43 grams per mole. 
Okay, so now we can use our calculator to determine how many moles of barium sulfate, we, how many grams of barium sulfate we would expect to get. 75 divided by 261.337 uh, times 1 divided by 1 times 233.43 and we would expect to get 66.99 grams of barium sulfate. Alright, so this is again 127 and the question was what? So that's the theoretical yield. Calculate the theoretical yield. So 427, make sure we're on track. 66.98, that's right. And now calculate the theoretical yield, the percent yield of barium sulfate. We actually only get 64.45. 64.45. So we got 64.45 is how much we actually got. We divided by 66.99, and that's 96.2% yield. 96.2% yield. Um, that's right, 96.2% yield. Okay, so if we're on to 429 now. We're 4129. Um, aluminum sulfate can be made by the following reaction. It is quite soluble in water. Um, in one experiment, 25 grams of aluminum chloride was mixed with 30 grams of sulfuric acid. And then we got 28.46 aluminum sulfate. Calculate the percent yield. All right, 25 grams of aluminum chloride. And 30 grams of H2SO4. So we don't know necessarily initially what the limiting reactant is. So we just calculate how many grams or moles, we'll do moles first. And now we go to grams of aluminum sulfate because um, the grams of aluminum sulfate is what we also have at the end as well. Molecular weight of aluminum sulfate. So we got 28.46 grams. So we're going to grams of Al2SO4, Al2SO4-3. All right, so here we need to go grams of aluminum chloride to moles of aluminum chloride. And we need to go from moles of aluminum chloride to moles of aluminum sulfate. How many moles of aluminum sulfate for every mole of aluminum chloride? We'll get one mole of aluminum sulfate for every two moles of aluminum chloride, right? And then we can go from moles of aluminum sulfate to grams of aluminum sulfate. So we just tried to find the aluminum sulfate molecular weight, 342.14. 342.14. Um, <clears throat> so now we need to find the molecular weight of aluminum chloride. Oh. Aluminum chloride has a molar mass of 133.3. Oh, that goes down here. Every one mole is 133.3 grams, right? Okay, so um, the first top, the top part here, we have 25 time, divided by 133.3 divided by 2 times 342.14. And that should be 32.08 grams of aluminum sulfate. All right? H2SO4. Um, so we can identify the molar mass of sulfuric acid. Okay? H2SO4 is sulfuric acid here. So we see that it's 98 grams for every mole of H2SO4, so H2SO4. So we go grams of sulfuric acid into moles of sulfuric acid, oh, wrong way. 98 down here, grams of H2SO4, one mole of H2SO4, okay? So then we have one mole of H2SO4, and for every, what's the ratio, 129, for every one mole of H2SO4, 
for three moles of H2SO4, we get one aluminum sulfate. All right, so this, uh, that this one here is uh, for one mole of aluminum sulfate. It's 342.14 grams. Okay, so again, three. That's three or 30? 30. 30, 30. 30 divided by 98 divided by three times 342.14. I'll try it again, I messed up. 30 divided by 98 divided by 3 times 342.14. This is 34.912. So we're actually going to get 32.08. We're not going to be able to get this much. We're going to run out of stuff. So we get 32.08. 32.08 divided by, that's how much we actually got. Um, Oh no, that's how much we theoretically could have got. We actually got 28.46. So we have 28.46 divided by 32.08. And that's 88.7% yield. 88.7% yield. Great. All right, so 32.08 was our theoretical yield, and 88% was our um, percent yield. 131. Last one. Potassium salt benzoic acid, potassium benzoate, has been made by the action of potassium permanganate on toluene. If the yield of potassium benzoate cannot realistically be expected to be more than 71%, what is the maximum number of grams of toluene needed to produce 11.5 grams of benzoate? So if we have 11.5 grams of potassium benzoate, I'll call that PB. All right, 11.5 grams of that stuff, and we're only going to get 71% maximum yield, then how many, what's the minimum number of grams of toluene? All right, well, <coughs> that many grams of potassium benzoate. Oh, I got to go. I got to finish up this problem later. All right, last one, potassium benzoate. If the yield of potassium benzoate cannot realistically expect to be more than 71%, what's the minimum number of grams of toluene we needed to produce? 11.5 grams of potassium benzoate. 11.5 grams of potassium benzoate is how much we want to produce. And we want to know how many grams of, uh, what is this stuff called? Toluene. Grams of toluene. All right, so 11.5 grams of potassium benzoate. So we have to determine the molecular mass, the molar mass, the molecular weight of potassium, or is that potassium benzoate? Potassium benzoate, okay. Molar mass of potassium benzoate. Okay, so for every one mole of potassium benzoate. All right, and for every one mole of potassium benzoate, you need one mole of toluene. So one mole of potassium benzoate, you need one mole of toluene. All right, and for every one mole of toluene, Okay, now this is the part where we're going to do, we're only really going to get, well, there's a toluene. We'll put in here, grams the molecular molar mass of toluene, molecular weight of toluene. Molecular weight of toluene. Molecular weight of toluene. H8. Uh, this is carbon times 12 times 7 for carbon. Hydrogen 8 times 1. 
So 7 times 12 plus 8. Ninety-two, ninety-two grams for every multiplied. All right. So if we got 100% yield, then we would expect to get 11.5 here divided by 160.21 times 92. We would expect to get 6.43, or we expect to require 6.43 grams of toluene. But we're only going to get 70% of that. So we need to have this much plus 70% more, right? Or uh, let's see, we're going to get 70%. So for every one mole of toluene, we're not going to get that, we're going to get 0 0.7 moles of potassium benzoate. That's the way to think about it. That's the way to think about it, right? So, because it says in there the maximum percentage is what? Oh, 71.71 moles, 0 0.71 moles of PB. So let's try it again. 11.5 uh, divided by 160.21 divided by 0.71 times 92. All right, so it's actually, we're going to need 9.3 grams of time. Is that the question?